Retail jobs are something a lot of people have to endure. It humbles you and it gives you a new perspective on life because of how miserable it is. When I was in high school, I applied to work at the Lego store and miraculously, I managed to get hired. I don't know how. Now this was my first ever job and that feeling of your first job is great. I'm about to be making big money moves, like by weekly paychecks of slightly above minimum wage. That's what I'm talking about. And you know what? My first week was great. One of the first people I got to help was this girl looking for a gift for her boyfriend. She mentioned she had ADHD, so every time she looked at a set, her eyes would gravitate towards another one immediately, and we would do loops around the store. I didn't mind this at all because I was learning about the store with her. Oh, what's this set? I didn't know that existed, uh, but it looks pretty cool. You should buy it. After a successful first week, cracks started to show on the job. Now working here was great, but at the end of the day, it was a retail job. And retail jobs have some concerning uh, qualities, mostly the customers. Some of them make me wanna jump out of a plane. Now we had something called the net promoter score, and these were basically reviews. Customers could leave ratings on how you did, and that affected things like, I actually don't know what it really did. Uh, now, because I was this charismatic, whimsical teenager, most of my reviews were great. But I did get this one weird one from this mid-30s European dude who said, and I quote, <clears throat> William is an amazing guy, so helpful, so handsome. I've fallen in love with this Asian guy. William, date me. Now, I was taken aback a little, but he gave me a perfect score. So, uh, I just brushed it off. I couldn't really complain, you know? But then he emailed the store a couple days later asking for my number. Um, I did not give him my number. The location I worked at was at a high-end mall, so it wasn't uncommon to see people spend thousands of dollars on Lego. One time during the holidays, there was this family who bought so many sets that we had to get a cart to bring it to their car. I volunteered to push the cart, so I followed this family, and they took an interesting path. The dad walks through Gucci and he dabs up all the workers like he's a regular there, which he probably was. And when we get to the loading zone where his car is, it's surrounded by security guards. Their family car, by the way, was a Lamborghini Urus. I can't imagine how much other expensive shit they had. I was so dumbfounded by the situation I was in that I asked, hey, could I get a picture with your car? And the dad was like, get in the car. Whoa, all right. So I get in the car and now I just have this dumb picture of me inside a Lamborghini with a goofy Santa monkey hat on. I got tipped $20, so they were cool people. Whenever I mention I work at the Lego store, without fail, I always get asked, do you get a discount? The answer is yes, by the way. It's 50% off. But surprisingly, I was the coworker who spent the least on Lego. Even with the discount, I barely bought it at all. Instead, I would leech off contests the store would hold to give away old display sets. There was one contest where whoever got the most positive reviews by the end of the quarter would get to choose which old set they would take home. Of course, I won the contest because I'm such a baller and I was gonna take home the Colosseum. Now this was a special set because all the pieces were glued together. So not only was it a cool display piece, it couldn't break. However, the person who came in second really wanted that set and because I have such a kind soul, I decided to give it to them. <sighs> Some days I regret that decision, but in a world where you can be anything, be kind. One problem the store had to deal with were resellers. Now the Lego reselling industry is huge. It's an amazing investment apparently, and people take it really seriously. Maybe I should have used my discount to hoard some sets. But the store would get regulars and you'd know right away if they were resellers. Anytime a set would go on sale, boom, resellers would snatch it. We had these free gifts with purchases that we would give out occasionally and their greedy asses would always ask for more. Like, no, bro, I know what you're doing. Do you not have like a job or a life or parents that love you? Sometimes the store would get so busy that we'd have to get a lineup. Line duty was pretty boring, but it gave me an opportunity to talk to people while they wait. You know, ask them how their day was, what they're here for, the usual. One day I was talking to this mom and her nine-year-old kid, Benjamin. Me and his mom were just having a chat and I mentioned that I was going into engineering next year for university. She was like, no way. Benjamin here wants to be an engineer when he grows up. I was like, bro, you're nine. When I was your age, I was, picking my nose or something. But this is where I was interrogated by Benny Boy over here. He was like, oh, what engineering are you going into? Uh, 
mechanical. No way, that's my favorite one. I just, I couldn't hate on this kid, you know? It was like I was looking into a younger version of myself. So we talked about Minecraft for the rest of the time, and before he left, I gave him a free minifigure. Benjamin, if you're out there, please go make me proud. We don't get to choose the music that plays in the store, but we do get to choose from a list of pre-made playlists. There were things like Disney, pop, Lego Friends, Lego Star Wars. It was a mix of Lego themes and songs that would play on the radio. But there was one playlist that caught my attention. You see, whenever I'd close, I'd put on a playlist at full volume and the store would become my own personal concert. But one day I discovered this playlist that would only play like six versions of Everything Is Awesome. We got the original, the sad version, the remix, any version you can think of, it was on that playlist. And I would annoy all my coworkers with this. Every time I clocked in, boom, that playlist would be playing. Cleaning up after the store closes, it's on full blast. But sometimes I'd forget to lower the volume before I leave. And one day my manager complained to me because whenever he'd opened at 8 a.m., he'd get blasted with everything is awesome. Like, dude, you're kind of missing the point of the song by being mad at me, you know? We don't have to call security often, but one time these two kids came into the store and one of them was dressed up as Captain America. I thought, okay, that's cute. But out of nowhere, Captain America sucker punches the other kid and he just runs out. The kid that got punched was laying on the ground. Now, I thought this was a joke at first because you know, they're dressed up, but no, bro was dying. So we called security and now there is this manhunt in the mall for Captain America. A Couple moments later, we got a call back saying, hey, we caught Captain America. I mean, it was a mildly amusing situation, but I felt bad for the kid that got punched. Like, what did you do to piss off Captain America that much? Despite some complaining I did in this video, overall, it was a great job. To be honest, I miss my coworkers the most. There were some great people that worked there. But for all the horrible customer experiences, the chaos, and the shitty pay, this one's for you. And retail jobs have some concerning qualities. Some of them make me want to jump out of a plane. Nice, nice, holy shit! Nice, oh my goodness, oh you my just God, jumped out of that plane!